It's been over a year since I've specifically shown you what's on my iPad and the reason for that is because not a huge amount has changed and from all the other videos I've made on this channel you've probably seen specifically what I've been using but enough has changed now for me to make this video so today I'm going to go over everything I love to use on the iPad and all the apps that go along with it so let's dive right into it. Let's talk about what iPad I actually use first because that's actually quite a complicated question for someone like me. But right now I'm using the M2 iPad Pro 12.9 inch in silver, but I'm still in that weird position where I have access to pretty much any iPad I want to use. Some of them are on loan, some of them are ones that I own. But right now the M2 iPad Pro is the one I've been using the most and it's most fully featured, so that's the one I'm going to talk about today. But bear in mind, I do think the M2 iPad Pro is complete overkill for most people. I actually just made a video on what iPad you should buy 2023 so I'll link that up here if you'd like to see it because right now my iPads you could probably get everything you wanted out of them from a lower end model and save some money too. Let's look at the home screens first because this is an interesting way that I actually use the iPad. I have four different home screen setups and they're all controlled by the shortcuts widget on the left which lets me jump into any one of those modes. You may have seen this a little bit before but I've actually finessed it since. So every time I change home screen not only do the apps change and the home screen changes but also the wallpaper changes to reflect the mode I'm in which I really like. First up I have the home screen. This is just my general home screen where I have access to kind of the apps that I use the most. Next up I have productivity. This jumps me into the productivity screen and then it gives me access to kind of all of the productivity apps that I like to use. I also have some widgets on the left here which help me kind of jump back into work quite quickly but otherwise it silences my notifications and just lets me get on with work which is nice. Jumping off from there I also have a gaming home screen. This one also activates if I connect a controller to the iPad as well which is cool. This jumps me into kind of the iPad gaming mode where I have access to all of my games and a few more widgets there which kind of give me an update. And lastly I have one called iPad Control. This one is a new home screen for me and basically I use it for when I'm using the iPad with an external monitor. I have all the apps open on the external monitor and then I use the iPad as this kind of widget control center so I can jump into things really quickly and just control the overall experience in a lot more of a nicer manner. To get this up and running, I'm using focus modes and home screen hiding. And I do have a video on how I had this set up, so I'll put that in the description below. But it's probably due an update, so if that's something you'd like to see, then do let me know in the comments below. Oh, and if you do like the wallpapers in this video, they're from my Boca pack. Really happy of how they turned out, so if you want to grab them, I'll pop them in the description below as well. In a more physical sense of what's on my iPad, I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Moft and the Snap Float Folio for iPad. This is the only origami float folio that raises the iPad to eye level and it all happens in one smooth movement, making it perfect if you want to use the iPad as a second screen for your Mac, watching movies or just playing some games. It also folds into a focus mode for viewing content in a lower manner and even a drawing mode for a more comfortable Apple Pencil experience. This thing is really nicely made too. It's using a nano lever on the outside, which is tough and scratch resistant. And on the inside, it keeps the iPad protected with a smooth lining, all while remaining thin and light. It also doesn't collect fingerprints at all. So it always looks clean, which I really appreciate. This works for the current iPad Pro, the Air and Mini models, and come in three different colors so you can get the one that matches you. Moft has a huge array of iPad and other tech accessories as well. So if you want to check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. And of course, a huge thank you goes out to Moft for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's talk apps. I'm not going to talk about every single one because we'd be here for ages, but I'm going to talk about the ones which are most productive for me at the moment. So if I jump the iPad into the productive mode, I can see all of the apps that I'm using for my productivity workflows. First up is Final Cut Pro, and I've just made a big video exposing all of this and showing it off. So if you want to check it out, I'll put it below. But this app is absolutely incredible for iPad, and it was long overdue for a huge amount of us. But this is pretty much a fully fledged Final Cut Pro for the iPad. So for any video editing I want to do on my iPad, I can now do it and not have to worry about taking my laptop with me or anything like that. It's a really powerful editor designed straight up from the base for touch controls and it works really, really well. I couldn't be more impressed with kind of how Apple pulled that one off. And for me, I think I'm going to use it for all of my short form content now. So everything you see on Instagram, everything you see on TikTok and YouTube shorts, I'm going to edit that on the iPad because it's a relatively simple edit and I know punching it out on the iPad will be nice and easy. Next up to that is another one I'm trying to get into and this is Logic Pro from Apple as well. This was another app which a lot of people had requested and it came out at the same time as Final Cut 
but this is a fully fledged music door for your iPad. Now I actually used to record a huge amount of music before I started getting into media and recording bands and all of those things was something I was really into and I used to use Logic for it on my old white MacBook so I've got like a pretty good knowledge of Logic Pro but on the iPad it's kind of obviously completely redesigned again and that's something I'd like to get into. The next apps I want to highlight in this page are ones that I've kind of been using for ages and they haven't changed in a long time because they're just so good. So I'll talk about them briefly, but Microsoft To Do is what I use for all of my list taking. You've heard me talk about that before, but Microsoft To Do really is incredible for someone like me. I use a burner list, so I make sure I get through my to-do list every single day. I don't like having something which goes over days and days and weeks because it just demotivates me. So Microsoft To Do, I find is really good for that. Tick things off as I go. That's great. Next up is Lightroom. I use this for all of my photo editing. So absolutely everything you see on my Instagram or Twitter or any photo from me anywhere always goes through Lightroom. And that doesn't matter if I'm taking the photo on my phone or on my camera or anything like that. I will absolutely edit it on Lightroom. Next up is a big one which I use a lot and that's Notion. Notion is my absolute brain for YouTube and all of my creative endeavors all thrown into one app. And Notion can be one of those huge apps which feels really kind of worrying and scary to get into because it really is a blank canvas. But once you get into it, it's a really great way to just organize yourself. I put everything in there, all of my video ideas, all of my scripts, all of my short form content, all of my goals, all of my ideas for future bits of content which I haven't even really fleshed out yet. And I've talked about Notion a lot, but it is one of those apps which is just fantastic and I'd be pretty lost without it. Moving on from there, for a lot of my design work, I still use Pinterest. I really, really love Pinterest and I spend a huge amount of time scrolling it. But whenever people ask me how did I get my style and how do I make everything look really nice and aesthetic-y and things like that, it usually starts on Pinterest of me scrolling things that I like on there and pinning stuff. And it's how I think about designing things like this office or designing like the coffee station, which I've got behind me over there. A lot of those ideas just start on Pinterest and I've got loads of boards for loads of different things. I actually need to set up a proper profile on there so you can follow me if you'd like to. So that's something I will do. And lastly on the regulars list is GoodNotes 5, which I think is actually just GoodNotes now at this point. But GoodNotes is my note taker of choice. I love GoodNotes. I've loved it for a long time. Every time I've made the best note taking app for iPad video, GoodNotes always finds itself towards the top. And that's for a good reason. It's just a really nice app for note taking and it's got a really good feel to it. I like the way it works. I like the way you interact with it. And GoodNotes honestly is where a lot of ideas start for me as well. Sometimes I'll just jot notes down and then I'll end up saving that into my Notion as well. So those are the regular apps which haven't really changed but they are integral to my iPad and how I run this channel. Something else new which I've been using as well is Google Drive but I'm also using Google One because you get a VPN built in. I didn't know this until recently and then I found it out and then I realized I no longer need a VPN from someone else. And the pricing is really good for Google One as well. It's not too expensive. I also wanted to talk about a couple apps which I was really excited about, but then I just ended up not really using them. And first up was DaVinci Resolve. There was a huge amount of excitement about this app coming out for iPad and you know, for good reason. This was a huge fully fledged video editor for iPad, the first real one. And I was excited for it too. But at that point in time, I had actually just switched over from Premiere Pro to Final Cut on Mac. And the idea of learning another video editor just after learning one was just too much to handle. And especially then translating that to an iPad layer, it just never really filled me with joy how I thought it would. So I ended up just pretty much abandoning that. But I do think it's an incredible app and obviously it's free, so you can't really complain at that. And secondly was Freeform from Apple. I was excited for this one because I thought I could use the kind of ever expanding canvas to jot out ideas and to use those sorts of things. And I did have a little bit of fun with it initially, but I already have everything kind of tied up in an organizational sense right now in terms of that. So jumping over to it and adding another tool just felt a bit unnecessary for me. But I do think it's a cool app. And I think if you've got a few of you collaborating, then it makes a lot of sense. But for me, I'm a solo act. I just don't need that sort of thing right now. So those are the main apps I've been using on the kind of productivity page. But I also wanted to highlight the widgets as well. I've got a calendar on there so I can see what's going on. I've got a Notion widget, which lets me jump into my most used pages, which I find really useful. I've got a files one, which lets me jump into most used file. But the shortcuts one has something extra here. Not only does it let me jump into those home screens, like I said at the start, but there's one here called Croku Radio as well. And this is a lo-fi channel. It's actually my own lo-fi channel that I've made recently with a few other people. And it's our own version of a lo-fi playlist on YouTube 
We've got two sets on there at the moment, but we're dropping a new set really soon. It might already be out by the time this video is out, so I'll link it below and just enjoy it. Get some work done, get some gaming done, or just chuck it on in the background while you're doing something else. It's some really nice music and we're really proud of it. All right, let's talk about gaming on the iPad because at the moment I'm going through a bit of a renaissance with it. Again, using the shortcuts widget, I can jump straight into my gaming mode and this silences all of my notifications and it will just bring up this gaming screen, which I really like. Now gaming for me on iPad kind of goes like this. I really like it sometimes and I won't play it for months, but since I picked up the iPad mini, I've been playing a lot more games recently and I kind of wanted to highlight three games that I've been really enjoying. And that first one is The Pathless. This is on Apple Arcade, but it actually came out on PS4 and a few other consoles as well, I think. This game has a really wonderful sense of motion. Effectively, you're a small archer running around this world and every time you hit a target, your speed increases and you can cross these huge, vast open plains really quickly and kind of find out the mysteries of what's been going on in this world. It's really tactile to play, so I'd really recommend using a controller if you're going to play it at all. But this is a nice game and I always feature it because I not only love how it plays, but the art style is just absolutely excellent. Secondly is one that I'd never thought I would talk about, but it's Diablo Immortal. I've actually played pretty much every Diablo game as a young kid growing up. And when it came out for mobile, I groaned like everybody else because I was like, oh, no one wants a free to play Diablo. But it turns out it's, it's pretty good and I'm kind of holding my hand hands up there because I usually hate games which kind of force microtransactions and things like that. But the experience here is really good. The graphics are great, the powers are cool. But the only thing I will say is it's really linear. It kind of really pushes you to certain places. And sometimes I quite like the exploration aspect, especially of the older Diablos, but I've been really enjoying that too. And lastly is one called What the Car, which is made by the same people that did What the Golf and it is the most silly, ridiculous game you've probably ever played. It's just about getting a car to a goal, but the amount of weird and wacky challenges which go along the way are totally worth experiencing. This is a really fun game when I just wanna pick up and waste five minutes or something like that and put it back down. I do have a lot of other experience of iPad games, so if you've got any others I should check out, let me know in the comments below because I always love finding out new things. And my final kind of home screen for the iPad is the iPad Control. And this is a home screen which is just full of widgets. So when I connect my iPad to my computer to use as an external monitor or something like that, all of these widgets kind of work hand in hand so I can control everything from the iPad on a touch basis while leaving the external monitor on its own for all of the apps and things like that. And that brings me around to how I use the iPad in my overall kind of Mac setup because it is a little bit different than a lot of other people. I'm using it on a stand next to my monitor and using things like universal control, it just lets me control the iPad as its own separate kind of smart monitor for having things up next to me. Now I use this a lot for checking notes, for browsing Instagram, for browsing TikTok, but also for things like Twitter or anything that's kind of in a list basis and something that I can scroll really easily. But having an iPad, which is a completely separate kind of computer experience next to me, which doesn't do what my Mac can do, is really useful. And the final shortcut button is just my home screen. This deactivates all of those other focus modes and brings me right back to my home screen on the iPad where I have the most used apps and all the things that I need to jump into quickly. And that kind of rounds up everything I've been using apps wise on the iPad. I hope you found it interesting. Sorry I haven't made it sooner, but like I said, not a lot of stuff has changed. But if you've got any app suggestions of things I should check out, then please let me know in the comments below. Always love to know what you have to think. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.